So in this video here, we're going to take a look at advanced analytics graphs with ultralytics. So if you're doing optic detection, optic counting, and so on, we can actually like have these visualizations once we want to take our models and put them into production in real world projects and applications. So we can have these bar plots, pie charts, and also line graphs. So we're going to have a nice representation of the objects. We can both have multiple classes. We can have single classes and so on, but this is really nice to build on top of optic counting systems. So we're basically going to see how we can set it up and also all the different types. And then we're going to take a look at some video examples. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If you go inside the new solutions tab up here at the top, we can go inside and find this analytics. You can also go in and find optic counting, optic cropping, blurring, and so on, workouts monitoring. We have videos covering all of these over here to the left. So these are some real world computer vision projects and applications which you can use out of the box. So there's code snippets in all of them in there. You can just copy them, paste them directly in and use them in your own projects. So right now, let's go inside our analytics tab. So if we take a look at the visual samples that we have, we both have a line graph. So it's basically just tracking how many objects do we have over time. You can have multiple different classes, but we can also just have a single class. Let's say that we want to do queue management and we want to have a line graph basically just representing and visualizing how many people, person and so on that we have in the image frame over time. So we're gonna have the time on the x-axis and then we can have the number of classes, the number of detections that we're counting on the y-axis. We can also go and use bar plots if you have multiple classes, pie charts and so on, if you want to take a look at the distribution and basically just visualize our data in that way. So this is really nice if you want to build production ready applications and systems with computer vision. You can just take all the outputs from the model, the counting systems that we have with Autolytics and just build these graphs on top of it. So here you can read about why graphs are important, but if we scroll a bit further down, we already went over that. So here we have all the analytics examples. We have line graph. We can have multiple lines as well if you're doing multiple optic counting. So again, you can have single, multiple. We have the pie chart, bar plot, and also an area chart, which is basically just covering a specific area. And then we can do class-wise counting as well. So this is a really nice way to visualize it. We don't have to do anything else. You can just copy paste this code snippet. We have a bunch of different arguments. If you want to change the labels and so on, the colors in a figure, the line colors, and all of that, and also if you want to save the images. So when we're doing these analytics, we both need to do optic detection and also optic tracking so we can track the optics over time. And by doing that, we won't get double detections. We will keep track of all the optics that we have in our frame and we won't have these duplicates or have multiple counts of the same objects, which is just in the frame. This is really nice if you want to do traffic analysis, could be like at an intersection, traffic line could also just be people in a queue. So it could be security queue at an airport or whatever, could also just be in a retail store. So this is pretty much everything that you have to do. Let's just jump straight into it and see the examples and how you can run it. So first of all here, again, you can do single line graph, you can do multiple lines. Let's just go with multiple lines for now, because that is basically just the same. Let's just jump into the code editor. So I have to open up the code editor. Right now, let's just go in and take a look at it. So this is just all the way from scratch. There we go. We have a bunch of videos that we can run through. I've just copied the code, pasted it in directly. So right now, we just need to initialize our model. You can use a pre-trained model, but you can also use a custom trained one. And we have videos covering all of that, the whole computer vision pipeline, how you can generate your own data set, trained autolytics, you'll be eight models and so on. So check those videos out. Then we need to open up our video capture, our video writer, when we want to visualize and store the results. Then we can set up the solutions here. So inside Autolytics, we can import both YOLO, the model architecture, and also the solutions. So these are all the different optic counting, optic blurring, and so on solutions that we saw inside the documentation. So then we can specify analytics. We can have the line, so we just specify the type, and this is the only thing that we have to change. So again, it's just a few lines of code to have this whole system up and running with Autolytics. Then we can specify our output writer for a video, the image shape, view image if you want to visualize our image while we're processing it, and also the maximum number of points that we want to have in our charts. Then we can just open up a video capture loading frame from our video file, could also be a webcam, RGBS stream and so on. Then we need to do optic tracking. So with Autolytics, we can just directly call track on our model, throw in the frame, we get the results out, and then we can just have a for loop running through all the results, basically just appending it to the labels, but also just incrementing the values for our graphs. So over time, we're basically just going to have the frames on the x-axis, which is act like just the time. 
And then again, you can always map that to seconds depending on the number of frames per second and so on that you have. And then we will have all the increments for each class on the Y axis. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. So if we're detecting a class in data that we want to track and also visualize with our graphs, we can just increment the value for that specific class. And again, this is if you're using multiple lines. And if that class is not visible in the frame, we just set it equal to zero. So that's pretty much it. Then we just need to update our chart. We're good to go. And we can then run inference and see a whole system up and running. So here we have two videos that we're basically just going to run through. So we have the checkpoints, we can count how many people we have, and then we can just have a line graph. That's a very good way to visualize how the distribution is. And we also have this back counter at an airport. So right now we just need to go in and specify the video file. So right now it's in the same directory as this graph.py file. So we can just specify a checkpoint. There we go. We don't need to change anything else. It's going to write it out to this video file and we should pretty much be good to go. So we can now just open up a terminal, run the Python script here. It's going to process the whole video file, but we can also go in and visualize the image. So once it's done processing, we can just go in and take a look at the multiple underscore line plot, and then we get the plot here, but we can also visualize it live while we're processing the frames. So you can just extract all the frames and so on, but it's also going to save this video file with matplotlib. So it's basically just a visualization chart. We can see we have person, backpack, suitcase, a handbag and skateboard and then we can see the people here over time so it's really nice to see how busy a specific area is in an airport retail shop and so on could also be traffic light intersection so right now we just track all the different classes but you can also go in and label or like filter it based on these labels so if you just go back into the documentation we can also go in and grab the bar plot or the pie chart there we go just copied it this is everything that you need to do. You can just use the code snippets out of the box. It's the exact same setup here. Instead of the line, we just specify pi, and we can also view the image, set that equal to true. So right now, again, let's go in and take a look at one of the other ones. Let's use this backs, and then we will get our pie chart, uh, width and height, and then the rest here is pretty much the exact same thing. We increment or set it equal to one, and here we set it equal to one because we have a pie chart. Let's rerun it, and we should actually like, just get the results. So right now it's just opening it up in real time. Right now we are not visualizing the results. You can go in and do that directly inside the track function. So inside track, we can set show equals true and you'll be able to see the exact same thing at the same time. But let's do that once we do the bar plots. So right now we can see that we have suitcases pretty much all over. Sometimes we have a backpack. Sometimes we have a person walking in in front of the camera, but this is again, really easy. So I just copied it, pasted it in, ran it on my video. You can also use your own custom model. So now we can see suitcase, backpack, and we have a couple of persons here in the frame as well. So it's nice to see the distribution in your image frame. So it's going to take a look at some of the other ones that we have the bar plot. Again, you can just see it is pretty much just the type here, the changes, and also the name of the file. So let's grab that one. And for a bar plot, let's go in and use our multiple line again, or a checkpoint. Checkpoint. So let's now go in and visualize the tracking as well. We can just set show equal to true as well inside our tracking function. Let's rerun it. Now we should be able to both see the tracking, but also our plots. So now we get our plot here and we also get our track. So again, we're running up detection and also tracking. This is running on my CPU, MacBook CPU, but then we get a person here. We might be able to get some backpacks and so on um, a couple of times, but right now we can just see we only have one bar because we have people here in the frame. So let's go in and take the other video with the backs instead. So let's just terminate this one and we can go inside and take the backs. Rerun it. And we're opening up. We have six backs now, seven backs or suitcases. We get a backpack. So again, it's just going to change depending on the detections we have. So this is really nice to see the distribution again. It doesn't really matter which of the charts that you're using. Could be personal preference, but also just whatever you like. You can also use multiple of them, but you can just go inside the analytics and graph them directly. So you can also go and do this area chart. Let's grab that person suitcase so this looks pretty cool and again it's just a few lines of code that you can build on top of your applications and projects so let's go and grab the last one here 
and you can always go in and filter it based on the class wide count so if you have a custom model you probably just want to detect all classes if you're using a pre-trained one you can go in and specifically say i only want cars trucks and pedestrians or like persons and then you can just specify the class indexes right here so right now we're just interested in all of them let's go in and take the backs again that was the best video we rerun it you should be able to do this area counting so right now we can see we have suitcase data points it's just going to create these lines but we also get the area under our graph so it's just another touch to our line graph that we had in the start but this looks pretty cool as well and then again if we have multiple classes we can kind of like see the distribution a bit better or at least the differences in the number of counts so this is pretty awesome you can use this for a lot of stuff it's just a few lines of code build on top of it definitely go in and test it out when you're building applications and projects with ultralytics so thanks a lot for watching this video here guys definitely check out the other videos that we have on the channel and then i'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos until then happy learning